let's say that you're a super busy chef of a restaurant and you cannot move from your kitchen island your place in the kitchen because you're so busy making a lot of items you need to make a burger for uh, one of the patrons of your restaurant and you have the recipe card right here with you and all the ingredients needed to make the burger are in a pantry that is slightly behind you but remember that you are so important that you cannot move from this place now how do you make the burger if you cannot move from this place you somehow you need to get the ingredients from the pantry onto your kitchen table right you use the help of your trusted assistant so this assistant is so intelligent your sous chef is so intelligent that he can read the recipe card and get the ingredients based on the recipe card from the pantry onto your kitchen table now that makes your job a lot easier you just have to assemble the ingredients you just have to cook it and make it into a ready burger so this is a pretty a cool setup in your kitchen and it works for you because you can use this assistant to bring any ingredient that you want from your pantry based on whatever recipe card that you have so that you can make the dish as fast as possible what does this have to do with tRNA now tRNA what is it it's a type of an rna molecule found in the cells and we know that it is involved in translation what is translation it is part of the protein synthesis process we know that protein synthesis starts from dna and from dna you get mrna and from mrna you get protein what does this have to do with this entire kitchen uh, chef sous chef scenario this is a pretty good analogy to understand the function of tRNA how does it work so in this case the assistant is the tRNA the chef and the kitchen island is the ribosome and the burger recipe is actually the mrna sequence the chef cannot physically move from that place to read the uh, recipe card and get the items from the pantry but the assistant can the tRNA can what the tRNA does is that it has the ability to read the mRNA sequence and upon reading the mRNA sequence the tRNA can bring the correct amino acids needed for that polypeptide chain to the ribosome where the polypeptide chain can be formed we know that proteins are made up of individual amino acids linked by a peptide bond right so the ribosome cannot do anything beyond function as a location for the synthesis of proteins similarly the mrna sequence does not have the ability to go to the pool of amino acids and get the amino acids needed in the same way amino acids are just compounds they don't have the sentient nature to figure out which of it needs to go on the peptide chain all that can be done only by the tRNA so the tRNA functions as an adapter molecule because it has two jobs it can perform two functions one is that it can read the mrna sequence it can read the recipe of the protein sequence and then it can bring the correct amino acid based on the recipe so the mrna goes from 5 prime to 3 prime and has a lot of nucleotides arranged in the set of codons right so a u g C A A A U C and all that. So the tRNA can recognize these codons on the mRNA and bring in the correct amino acid this codon codes for. We know this from the genetic table that each codon codes for a single amino acid. So the tRNA is capable of reading this mRNA sequence and bringing in the correct amino acid so that the growing polypeptide chain can be formed. So that is the job of tRNA as an adapter molecule. And in this video we are going to take a look at the structure of tRNA. We'll take a look at the actual translation process in another video. So tRNA exists in two different forms one is the secondary structure which looks sort of like a clover leaf but ultimately its functional structure is its tertiary structure which sort of looks like an inverted L shape but this right here this image right here is its secondary clover leaf structure as it is with any RNA it is made up of nucleotides arranged from the 5 prime to the 3 prime direction it is synthesized from a set of tRNA genes in our DNA and it folds upon itself forming its secondary clover leaf structure 
and then it goes and associates with the ribosomes when it does that it forms its tertiary inverted l structure so this clover leaf structure has specific parts that have specific functions first let's start with the 3 prime end so the 3 prime end of the tRNA has a sequence known as the CCA tail. It has a free hydroxyl group. This sequence is very important with this hydroxyl group. It is very important. We'll take a look at it in just a while. Apart from having a 3 prime CCA tail, it also has a D loop. And below this comes the most important part of the tRNA which is the anticodon loop. So if the mRNA has codons, the tRNA has anticodons, sequence of nucleotides complementary to the codons. If the codon of the mRNA is AUG, the tRNA that corresponds to this specific mRNA codon will be UAC. This is very important for the formation of temporary complementary base pairing during the protein synthesis process. Uh, so you might be wondering now, we know that there are 64 codons. And the codon degeneracy means that 64 codons, sometimes multiple codons code for the same amino acid. Out of these 64 codons, 61 actually code for amino acids and 3 are stop codons. There are no tRNAs for stop codons. But does it mean that there are 61 tRNAs in each cell? The answer is no. Research suggests that there are actually only about 31 tRNAs for all the 61 codons. This is due to a property known as the wobble hypothesis. And what this wobble hypothesis says that this anticodon loop here, especially the first nucleotide in this anticodon loop, can form non-Watson-Crick base pair. What is a Watson-Crick base pair, first of all? That is a regular base pairing like A pairs with U and G pairs with C. A non-Watson-Crick base pair is something that is different from this regular one. A can pair with G, A can pair with C, U can pair with C and U can pair with G. These are non-regular type of base pairing which is capable by this anticodon loop. So it means that different combinations can be formed with just one anticodon sequence. Let's say there is GAA. This actually can, can form complementary base pair with what CUU. But because of the wobble hypothesis, this G can base pair with say AUU as well. It can form temporary non-Watson-Crick base pair during the translation process. This helps just 31 tRNAs to read all the 61 codons in the mRNA sequence. So, we'll take a closer look at this anticodon loop in just a while. But before that, let's take a look at this CCA tail. So, like I mentioned, the 3' prime CCA tail has a free hydroxyl group that can bind to the amino acid. The process is known as amino acylation, tRNA amino acylation. And it is catalyzed by the enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthetase. So this enzyme adds a single amino acid to the 3 prime OH uh, group and charges this tRNA. That is what this process is called charging of tRNA. Now this tRNA is ready to deposit this amino acid onto the growing polypeptide chain based on the codon sequence of the mRNA. Now let's take a closer look at the anticodon loop. So the anticodon loop is found at the bottom of the clover leaf secondary structure and it has nucleotide bases complementary to the mRNA sequence. So if this is CAA, then this will be GUU. Which amino acid do you think will be attached to this 3' prime OH end? Do you think it depends on the sequence of the anticodon loop or the codon on the mRNA? Trust me, this is something that you can easily get confused with. Always remember that the amino acid depends on the codon of the mRNA and not the anticodon of the tRNA. So this uh, tRNA right here would have the amino acid glutamine that is uh, GLN as opposed to having valine. You see that CAA actually codes for glutamine. Whereas GUU codes for valine. Because the 
amino acid is determined by the codon of the mrna and not the anticodon of the trna this trna would have glutamine gln attached to it always remember the sequence of the mrna the codon of the mrna that determines which amino acid is bound to the trna this way each trna reads the codon on the mrna and brings in the correct amino acid corresponding to that codon and adds to the polypeptide sequence during the process of translation we'll take a closer look at the exact process of translation in another video